How's it going guys and welcome to the Formar Ranch YouTube channel. So today we're going to be diving into a review on the new ATN Excite 4K Pro. This is the 5 to 20 power model and as always I like to start off with an unboxing to show you guys exactly what you'll get should you decide to invest your money in this. So first things first, the optic itself obviously. You get this really nice neoprene cover that zips up and inside will be your charger. Right away you should, you'll notice and feel that the wire seems to be pretty decent quality. It feels durable, looks durable, and should last the test of time. But I'll make sure to update you guys if anything changes. You do also get your eyepiece extensions. So you have one for the rear and a sunshade for the front. Three 30 millimeter scope rings are included, which is a very appreciated touch. So you don't have to worry about spending additional money on rings once you get your optic. But I did want to point out that on one of the rings, you do have rail sections should you want to attach any extra illuminators, lights, or lasers. Just another thing I wanted to add real quick in terms of why they included three rings is because you'll notice these two are vertical where this one currently has the extra ring accessory where you can add the additional illumination, lasers, lights, etc. Where these other two are smooth. This one is offset. So you can mix and match. If you wanted to use two verticals and swap this top with this one, you can do so or vice versa. You can use this offset. If you're using something like a bolt action rifle or something that is a little bit longer length to pull, you can move your scope back using this to where the eye relief is comfortable for the user. So they actually were pretty clever and thought ahead in terms of sending you this kind of combination to where you can really customize it for yourself. Also included is an ATN IR illuminator. And this is definitely an improvement from the one that came with the Excite 2 HD. It has some nice tactile clicks for different power settings. And then you can twist the objective to focus or widen the beam. Batteries were included for the illuminator. You also have a nice microfiber cloth for cleaning your lenses. And then of course your manuals in detail and then a quick start guide to get you going. And of course your needed Allen wrenches are included as well. So just real quick, I wanted to give you guys a very preliminary and initial impression of this optic just by feel itself. When I picked it up, I was pleasantly surprised. Although it's a fairly large optic, it's extremely lightweight for its size. In fact, ATN says that it weighs 2.2 pounds and it definitely feels right up that alley. It's not something heavy that I don't think you'll notice too much being on top of your rifle. The knobs themselves are nice and sturdy. They don't feel too loose, but they're not tight enough to where it's a pain to adjust. And that also includes the focus on the front. I don't think it's going to bounce around with recoil, but it's not heavy enough to give you a hard time. The buttons themselves are nice and tactile, so there is a nice positive click, especially with the power button. You can really feel that initiate. And then the zoom itself feels pretty smooth and straightforward. Now, what is highly recommended by ATN, as well as myself, when you initially get this optic, is a firmware update. This is done simply by using a micro SD card. Go to the ATN website, download the update to the memory card, and then when you insert it into your optic and power it on, the scope will automatically prompt you if you'd like to update it. And go ahead and select yes, and then you're good to go, and you have the latest version of firmware by ATN. Okay, so now the night test, what most of you guys are probably most interested. And as a side note, this is also an audio test. So the audio, my voice is actually being recorded by the scope. This is just to give you guys kind of an idea of what to expect if you're going to be recording during hunting or shooting, the audio quality that you'll be able to pick up. So without further ado, the wall that I'm aiming at is exactly 125 yards away from where I'm at. I measured that with a range finder. And although you can see it, this is actually with no illumination whatsoever. So this is a full moon that's out tonight, no illumination whatsoever. So I'm going to go ahead and flip on the provided ATN illuminator. And here we have the low power, the middle, and then full power right there. And this beam is fully focused. So again, you can see our gate there. 125 yards away. I'll go ahead and pan through the yard. So that fence line there is 125 yards and then we're at an angle so it's actually getting further away out to a, probably about 140 yards that corner right there. You can see everything in this yard is perfectly lit up with the illumination and it's 
it's also extremely clear. So I'm going to go back to that point of reference. So here again is uh, 125 yards, and I'll go ahead and zoom in for you guys. I'll make sure it's focused so you'll see it got a little blurry there, went a little too far. So right about there is as focused it's going to get. So it is a digital zoom, guys, so take it for what it's worth. It will still help you be more accurate when placing shots. So now, like I said, this is the ATN Illuminator. I'm curious to test it against the aftermarket Illuminator that I have, so I'm going to flip that off. So that was the ATN, and here is the one I have been using. I'll toggle my power settings as well. So honestly, to me, at least on my end, maybe you guys will correct me, it looks about the same. Both these are running on a fresh set of batteries. Um, so the one that ATN provided was pretty, pretty, um, pretty good, guys. I'm pretty impressed. Switching back again to the provided ATN illuminator. Full power. That's not bad at all. And just notice you can even see the field across the street there. And as an extra note, that tree line way over there is exactly 513 yards away. This is no illumination, but I'll go ahead and flip on some illumination and see if that makes a difference. And again, this is the fully focused beam. So not a whole lot. And one thing with night vision, guys, to keep in mind is that it's going the infrared Although you can't see it, it works the same as a flashlight. So if there's any dust or dirt in the air, humidity, moisture, fog, all that, it's going to illuminate that, and that's why you're noticing a little bit more of that haze right now. It is by no fault of the scope. It's just the kind of technology that we're using, guys. So here's some quick sample footage at sundown. Now please note this is not mounted to a firearm. It is just simply mounted in my tripod, just the optic itself. But I wanted to let you see what it looks like at sundown. So this is no illumination whatsoever. The sun is beyond the horizon and this is what you can expect with the optic. Now here's some quick sample hunting footage for you. And as far as orienting yourself, the feeder that you can see there is roughly 125 yards away from me. It is a completely moonless night, but I am using my aftermarket illuminator, and not because I feel like it's any better than ATNs, but I simply have become spoiled with the nice rechargeable batteries that I have for it. Now, one thing I find that's kind of a learning curve is making sure your optic stays focused. But if you want to see the actual hunting footage, you'll have to stay tuned because there won't be any of that in here, just demonstrations. But of course this optic works just as well during the day as it does at night, which is a nice touch because some night vision technology that's out there can be damaged by bright light or sunlight exposure. So it's nice to know that you don't have to worry about that. But here's some sample footage just to give you an idea of exactly how the scope will perform. Now here we have a target at 25 yards with your standard one inch grid. And as an extra point of measure, the bullet holes visible are 30 caliber holes from my 300 blackout build. Now I have the same target as well at 50 yards. I bring it into full power and then focus the optic completely for you so you can see the clarity. And of course the same process is repeated again at 100 yards. I bring the optic into full power and ensure that it is as focused as it'll get. And this is what you have, guys. And although there's some clarity lost because of the digital zoom, it'll still help you to make very precise shots. And just for one final step of good measure, here's a quick pan during the daytime so you kind of get an idea of the clarity and refresh rate of the pixels. All right, guys, so by far my favorite feature on this optic is how simple and easy it is to zero. Now, I'm out here at the range. I had taken the optic off my rifle and put it back on, so I wanted to verify that uh, I am zeroed for my next time I take it hunting. So my first shot landed right here. It's about an inch and a half low and a half an inch right of the bullseye. And now when you go into your settings menu and you say you want to zero your reticle, it gives you this view where essentially you put your crosshair over the bullseye, your intended point of impact, and then you drag a simple cursor on top of where the round actually went. Now you can literally do this in only one shot if you're confident that your shot was good, no human error. 
you hit exit, save your changes, and your rifle is zeroed. Now, I'm sure 99% of you out there, like myself, want to confirm your zero. So I went ahead and did so, and that is about as good as it gets, guys. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in for you. But look at that, right on the bullseye. So I took one shot, I said I wanted to zero it, I dragged the cursor where the round actually went, and the scope corrects itself, and we are dead center now. It just really doesn't get any better than that, guys, and it's so simple and easy and user-friendly to use that it is, like I said, my favorite feature that I really wanted to point out and share with you guys. Now, hopefully you guys can see this. I know it's a bright, sunny day. Not really. Do the best I can. But the rifle... The scope is actually transmitting a live feed to my phone, which is pretty cool. So it's letting, if you had a shooter with you or you wanted to kind of scan around while someone's hunting and had night, the night vision going, you can do that. One last feature I wanted to share with you guys is actually the built-in rangefinder function. Now, if you know the size of your target, so for example, if you knew the average height of a deer or a wild hog, you can use this feature by simply placing a line above and then below your target, and the scope will calculate the angle, and it'll know exactly how far away that target is based on the average height of those targets. And then you can use the ballistic feature where it'll automatically calculate your bullet compensation, essentially changing your zero for that new specified distance so you can be on the target every time. But there are honestly way too many awesome features packed into this one optic to fit into a single video. So I just wanted to share a few of my favorites with you. But be on the lookout for some more specific videos focused on single features at a time. Alright guys, so I of course gave you my initial impressions upon unboxing this optic. Now I've had this scope in my possession for about two months for evaluation and testing. And I want to kind of follow up and give you my overall thoughts on this optics. Now guys, what I want to do is make a separate video comparing this optic to the ATN's previous generation, which is their Excite 2 HD. So I will have a separate video. Check the links in the description below if you're interested in that. I don't want to get into the weeds too much in this video about comparing it to another optic. I really want this video to stay focused on this line, the 4K specifically. So if you are interested in that, check it out. But other than that, I'm going to try to keep my overall impressions uh, of this scope in this video alone. So battery life is obviously something I've really, really enjoyed on this optic. That's the first thing I'm gonna start with because with an electric scope, guys, I feel like that is absolutely critical. If your scope dies, if you have to constantly be stressing out about the battery life and worrying, that's just, you know, that's kind of a deal breaker for me. I'm sure it is for many of you out there, but not once did I ever kill the battery on this thing. Now, ATN actually advertises an 18 hour battery life on a single charge. Now, I've never, like I said, depleted the battery just because it's been so good for me, but the closest I've ever gotten is after a couple hours at the range and then leaving it on, taking it on a five hour hunt. Again, just kind of trying to drain the scope if possible, and it never even got below half of the battery's capacity, which is phenomenal. So I wasn't stressed out during my hunt. Every now and then I kind of, I peeked into the scope just to check on it, but I soon stopped worrying about it and just really could keep my attention on the potential animals just because I stopped worrying about it, which is awesome. So ATN definitely did it right in terms of battery power. And again, like I said, with an electric scope, guys, that is critical. So thumbs up to ATM on that. Now, the other thing that was kind of an initial concern just from the outside looking in on this kind of optic is the size was pretty big. I was really worried about how heavy it was going to be. I pictured myself walking, uh, you know, to and from the, the deer stand or waiting for pigs or anything, you know, just actual field use and how practical it would be to have an optic of this size, especially since it is electric. Um, and I was worried about the weight initially, but like I said, guys, in the beginning of this review, it felt extremely lightweight. And when it was on the gun and being carried around, I didn't notice any kind of um, extra weight that I wouldn't have expected from just a standard scope. And it's, again, with the size, I was pleasantly surprised that it's almost like it's not there. Now, in terms of durability, I have not experienced any issues whatsoever with anything failing on me. It said I've been carting it around for hunting, shooting, been throwing it in the back of my truck, and nothing has shifted around on me, nothing's come loose, and uh, the electric components themselves are all functioning. It always powers on when I want it to, powers down when I want it to, and again, nothing uh, seems to be an indicator that anything is going to fail anytime soon. Of course, I like to update you guys. If something does go wrong, I'll be sure to do so, but so far so good, and 
like I said, this scope has really just built a lot of confidence. I, I really trust it to work when I need it to work based on how it's been performing for me so far. But of course guys, nothing is perfect. I'd be lying if I was telling you that this optic is perfect. So I just want to give you guys some of the cons that I have discovered. Not that it's any issues with the scope. Some of these things are just how it is. So now something that people may be a little disappointed with in terms of this optic and you know, it's really not this optic, it's the optic technology. And I'm not saying ATN, I'm saying digital night vision in general, is that whenever you have a variable power scope and you try to zoom in, it's not really true magnification that's zooming in. I'm sure there is some to an extent, but it's digital. So it's kind of similar to your phone camera. Yes, you can zoom in, but it becomes pixelated because it's really just blowing up that image. Now, it still allows you to make more accurate shots. Your reticle still stays the same. And when you zoom in, you can still see your margin of error better, which makes you as a shooter better, which is what's important. But again, it becomes pixelated. Some people I could see becoming disappointed in that, but I just wanted to let you guys know that it is the nature of the beast when you're talking about digital night vision. But like I said, in terms of previous generations, the digital zoom on this and just the overall clarity is still phenomenal. They are going in the right direction and I've been extremely happy with the clarity of this scope. Another thing that I've noticed, and I, I wouldn't really call it a con, it's just an observation. It's that if you are recording video and you're zooming in while recording, the audio gets cut. So when you play back your video, the audio actually stops recording while you're zooming. Now, I found that a little bit interesting. It is what it is, guys. It's just something to be aware of. Obviously, you know, the video is the most important thing you want to capture. Ideally, it'd be nice to have some of the audio. I don't think anyone's planning on taking a shot while zooming in, so you shouldn't really lose your shot, but it is something I want to put out there. And I'd kind of say it kind of falls on the middle. It's not a pro or a con. It's just something I've noticed about the function of this scope. So just full disclosure, wanted to put that little detail out there. Now, guys, the only thing that I would for sure call a con, in my opinion, while I was using this optic, and what's ironic is that it's something so small, and it's probably simple to fix. It's actually the rubber cover for your micro SD card. Now, ATN had a good thought here. It appears to be that when there's not an SD card in there, there's a little bit of a lip that'll pop out so that it'll plug into the slot and kind of create a seal to protect your electronics when you don't have an SD card in place. However, when you do have an SD card in place and you try to close that rubber seal, if you press it even just a little bit too much, it pops your SD card in and then it kind of ejects it, just like if you were to use your fingernail or something small to try to pop it out. Now that's obviously kind of an oversight, uh, like I said, they were going in the right direction. This is just my opinion. It appears they did that so that they could seal up the electronics, which is a great thought when you don't have an SD card in place. But for me, and I'm sure many of you out there, the whole reason or one of the biggest selling points of the scope is the fact that it lets you record while shooting, and that's an awesome thing to do. And unfortunately, you gotta be kinda careful when trying to protect your electronics with an SD card in there because it kinda tends to wanna eject on you. And it's something that I've kind of had to keep an eye on. I have not lost an SD card. I have not had it eject on me, but it just takes a little extra care and caution that maybe some of you guys don't want to mess with. And I just, again, full disclosure, wanted to put that out there. Other than that, guys, there's really nothing else that I disliked about this optic. It performed great. It held at zero. Nothing got messed up. Uh, I've been running it on this 300 blackout build of mine, and uh, it's really just been a pleasure. And again, in terms of full disclosure and transparency, I want to let you guys know that ATM did originally send this to me um, for a review. However, I liked it so much and I thought it was such an improvement over their previous generation that I have actually opted to buy it. So I've actually paid ATN to keep this optic while it's been in my possession and I'm putting my name behind it, guys. I mean, I'm not just telling you that it's worth their money. I've actually put my money towards this optic. I've purchased it for myself with my money as well. And I just want to let you guys know that I like to be transparent. I've truly, truly enjoyed this optic, and I know many of you out there will as well. Now, of course, if you're interested in this optic for yourself, I will, of course, as always, leave a link in the description below so you can go to the ATN website and check it out for yourself. And as mentioned earlier, I will have a second video comparing this to the previous generation just so you can see the drastic improvements and maybe decide if one line or the next is better suited for you depending on your budget and what you have intended. As always guys, I want to thank you so much for stopping by the Formal Ranch channel and have a good one.